So then what happens if you go on like birth control pill, the birth control pill at 16 and you get off of it at 45 and right. you've never, you haven't been releasing eggs. You ha- you don't have your own natural hormonal rhythm. What right. happens at forty five? You know that's a really great question. And and the thing is, like, there is almost no research looking at the effects of hormonal birth control on like the development of the brain or the rest of the body, especially during adolescence. You know, because mm. a lot of women are put on it really early. Like you were saying, like if you're sixteen, you know, or even if you're really if you're any age before twenty and you're going on this, your brain and your body are still developing. And, you know, they're, they're going through the pubertal transition. And mm-hmm. the leading, you know, sort of architecture in the transition, you know, of building your, to taking your childlike brain and body and turning it into the grown-up version of itself are your sex hormones. I mean, they're leading the orchestra in terms of coordinating wow. all of the development that goes on in your body during the pubertal transition. Mm-hmm. And so then to suppress hormone production... Right. And replace it with these synthetics that are either, you know, in, inadequately stimulating our hormone receptors or stimulating some of them, but not the other ones or stimulating the wrong ones altogether. Um, we don't know what that does to development, but there's absolutely no way. It would literally require a miracle from the scientific heavens for it not to affect development because there's yeah. just no way. I mean, it's You've like our manipulated hormones- a core system in our body now. Yeah, I mean, it, there's just no way that when you take it during the developmental years where sex hormones are playing an organizational role in the body, that that is not going to have a lasting impact. And we just don't know what it is or whether it matters. Do you know what I wow. mean? Like, it could be that it affects all these systems. But if you really look at, you know, outcomes, like how people feel and experience that it doesn't really matter. I don't think that that's probably the case, but it could be because we just don't know. But there's so- just no way it doesn't affect it. Yeah, I mean, it seems impossible. And if you're not releasing eggs, I mean, I have so many thoughts on that because there's a lot of wisdom in those eggs. And then what, do they just die inside the ovaries? Like what happens if they don't have hormonal juice? Do they just wither away and die in there? Yeah, well, so that's a really interesting question. It's not one that we have a really full answer on, but I'll tell you what we do know. And it's like little pieces of information. So we do know that they don't just stay there and get preserved, right? Okay. Or else it would be wonderful, right, if women just went on the pill and then they were like 45 and went off it and then could be fertile, yeah, you know, for 15 years. Yeah. Like, that would be fabulous. Yeah, and then like women delay could... it a little bit. Yeah. yeah, no, totally. And so... All moms would love that. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah. And so so that doesn't happen, unfortunately, because people have looked into that. And so what seems to be happening is that there's a little bit of egg... Div- like, the egg, the egg follicles are starting to get stimulated because, like, the levels of the hormones in birth control aren't high enough to fully suppress it completely. But it just leads to these little minuscule amounts of endogenous or internal estrogen Mm. being released, not anything that's like physiologically noticeable. Interesting. But it does seem to suggest that what's probably happening is that these egg follicles are starting to get stimulated where they're growing a little bit. But then, yeah, then they ultimately wither away and die. Wow. Wah, wah, wah. So I <laughs> yeah right. So so I'm pretty sure that all the avid listeners of the Resetter podcast are now sending this episode to their daughters. <laughs> yeah, that are in their 20s. I can pretty much guarantee that. But what about what about when you do hit your mid 40s? Like knowing mm-hmm. that this occurred, and mm-hmm. now you're technically moving into the other end of the hormonal mm-hmm. spectrum. Mm -hmm. Are there some tried and true things that a perimenopause menopausal woman needs to know if she's been on birth control since she was 16? Like like an eat like a girl. I I did some research on the nutrients that are lost through the birth by taking regular use of the birth control pill. Is there any way we can ease the transition off of that when you're in your perimenopausal years? All right. I mean, I would imagine that e- that whatever, you know, the, the, the types of things that are going to ease the the transition for a cycling woman are going to be very similar, if not exactly the same as what it would be for a perimenopausal woman. So the, the yeah. recommendations that you make for readers of your book about uh, n- nutritional deficiencies, for example, that you can try to address when you're transitioning yeah. off of birth control, I think can be very helpful to, to mm-hmm. m- perimenopausal women. I think that the transition into, you know, the the perimenopausal transition and then the transition into full menopause, I think that, you know, the that transition is probably going to be pretty similar for women who've been using hormonal birth control and those who are not, except mm. that, you know, 
there's this tendency with doctors when women are going through you know the menopausal transition is to stick them on the birth control pill or just to keep them right. on the birth control pill. Yes, and, um, I've heard this so many times. Yeah, I've got friends who were who have been on it for a really long time and they're entering their late 40s and their doctors are just recommending that they stay on it, you know, until they're absolutely sure that they won't be cycling anymore like in their 50s. And, you know, you know, I, yeah, what I don't are your thoughts on that. Well, I just I just don't know. So here's yeah. the I here's the the story with that. So, you know, for a naturally cycling woman who's going off of hormonal birth control, there it, it can, you know, it usually starts with a decrease in the release of progesterone. That's the first, you know, hormone to leave the party yeah. is that you have these sort of wonky cycles where you start to mature an egg, but it really doesn't go anywhere. And so you're releasing estrogen, but then because there's not really uh, a nice, healthy egg follicle that's releasing this nice, healthy egg, you're not releasing progesterone. And so you kind of go through this period where uh, progesterone levels are low, estrogen levels are high. You kind of, you know, and you kind of have to ease into that. And then estrogen levels start to get lower and you have to kind of ease into that. And mm-hmm. it's, um, it, it's not fun for anybody. Like, I don't know anybody who's like really celebrates this as an amazing time during their during their adult lives, yeah. but it, it can be relatively smooth sailing if if you handle it right. We can talk about what some of my thoughts are on that because I do think that some women really do well using a hormone therapy, and so we can kind of mm-hmm. talk about that. Talk and then, about them. Yeah, and yeah. then also like alternatives to that if you don't want to do that because I know yeah. that there's also a lot of women who are like, I don't want anything to do with synthetic hormones, and, and that's yeah. there's things to do about that too. But for women who are are transitioning off of hormonal birth control, especially if they've been on it for a really long time, and, and you're transitioning from that into cycling, that's a little, I mean, it's a little bit of a, it's it's some bumps, it's right? Corrupt. You get some, yeah, yeah, yeah you get yeah. some bumps in the road because you go yeah. from having this brain that's used to getting the same hormonal message every day. And especially okay. if you've been giving your brain that same message every day for several years, right? In some cases, decades you right. know, where women are on it for like 20 or 30 years and they're getting the same hormonal message. And then all of a sudden you take that away and then it's being replaced with this dynamic, you know, these dynamic changes. Mm-hmm. And your brain has to do a lot of, you know, figuring things out. And and you have to have a lot of uh, a lot of neuroplasticity to be able to like create new hormone receptors and all these other things for your body to deal with that. And so mm-hmm. to transition off then naturally and then naturally cycle and then have to, you know, then transition from that into the hormonal trend, it can be a little bit of a, a, a little bit of a rocky road. Yeah. But, you know, I, I don't, you know, I, I it's, I, I think that getting the benefits of cycles is always a good idea just because yes. hormones and the release of hormones, they have so many positive effects on our body. They affect bone density, they affect mm-hmm. neuroplasticity in the brain. And so, you know, if you're in that sort of spot, where you're having to, you know, figure out like, do I just stay on birth control forever or do I capitalize on the benefits that I get from actually cycling? I would say benefit from the actually cycling for that period of time to get the benefits of the the hormones, even though it is a little bit of a rocky road, that it might be worth it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking is is find a natural rhythm because one of the things that I've heard, and this was my big complaint around my daughter getting on the birth control pill, is now you're synthetically manipulating a natural cycle. So if you Mm. go from the birth control pill to hormone replacement, where is where is the woman's natural rhythm? Like the brain doesn't really know that. And that seems like it could be a little dangerous. Yeah, yeah. I think that that can be. I think it could be, if nothing else, really confusing. You know? Yeah, like for the confusing for the, might be the best way to say you it. like for the poor brain. You know, like yeah. like what is this? Like what are we doing yeah. here? Yeah. So I I do think that there's I think that there's benefits from transitioning off and like trying to reap as many benefits as you can from cycling while you can, and yeah. then you know and 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 then deciding whether or not you want to 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 use hormone therapy.